Hello everyone, we are back with the topic pharmacokinetics and finally we have reached the fourth pillar of pharmacokinetics that is excretion. In this video we will be studying about excretion of drug. Now what is excretion? Excretion is the passage out of systemically absorbed drugs. The drugs which has been systemically absorbed gets eliminated out of the body. Now why excretion needs to take place? Because drug is a foreign substance and we can't keep that drug for a longer duration in our body because it will produce its own toxicity. So it should be thrown out of the body through the process called excretion. Now there are various sites through which excretion occurs in our body from kidney through urine, from liver through bile, from intestine through fecal matter, from lungs through exhaled air and from nursing mother through breast milk. But most of the drugs are excreted from kidney in the form of urine. So we'll be studying about renal excretion. Now 90% of the drug is removed through renal excretion. All the water soluble drugs are removed by this as well as most of the lipid soluble drugs after metabolism are excreted through renal excretion. Now the process involved in renal excretion are glomerular filtration, tubular reabsorption and tubular secretion. Now let's study first through a diagram all this process. Now here I have taken a part of a nephron. Now what happens through renal artery the drug enters into the kidney and from the efferent arteriole the drug is brought into the glomerular capillaries. These are the slit junctions present into the glomerular capillaries. The drug gets filtered through this slit junctions and enters into the Bowman's capsule. So this was the first point filtration. Now the drug which did not get filtered through this slit junction through efferent arteriole they are taken into the peritubular capillaries and from there into renal vein and back into systemic circulation. So we have done with the first point that is filtration. The second comes the reabsorption that is tubular reabsorption. Now God has gifted this property of reabsorption because many things are filtered through glomerular capillaries but out of this very many things are there which is very essential for our body which get reabsorbed from this renal tubules back into the circulation through the peritubular capillaries. So this was the reabsorption. The next comes the secretion. Now there are certain things which directly from this peritubular capillaries is transported into the renal tubules that is the active secretion. Now all these things is excreted out in the form of urine that is a fourth point excretion. So now let's study each process in detail. The first comes the glomerular filtration. Now we all know the pores of the glomerular capillaries are larger in size than the usual capillaries. So both the lipid soluble drug as well as the water soluble drug gets filtered through this glomerular capillaries. But what happened? One criteria applies here is that only the non-protein drug or the free drug gets filtered through glomerular capillaries. The drugs which are binded to protein or the protein binded drug does not get filtered through glomerular capillaries. Why? Because in normal condition the glomerular capillaries do not filter protein out of the body. Only in disease conditions like nephrotic syndrome and all the proteins are filtered out through glomerular capillaries. So higher the plasma protein binding of the drug lower will it be glomerular filtration. Now the normal glomerular filtration rate is 90 to 120 ml per minute. So this was the glomerular filtration. Now we will study about tubular reabsorption. Now what happens after glomerular filtration the plasma concentration of that drug falls down. So the principle of passive diffusion applies here. As the plasma concentration falls down the drugs start getting reabsorbed. Only lipid soluble drugs are reabsorbed while the water soluble drugs are excreted out. Why? Because in tubular membranes slit junctions are not present through which the water soluble drug can get absorbed. But the lipid soluble drug easily diffuses across this tubular membranes. So tubular reabsorption depends upon the lipid solubility of the drug. Higher the lipid solubility of the drug the larger amount of it will get reabsorbed. So this was the tubular reabsorption. The next comes the tubular secretion. Now what happens here the drug whose filtration or the clearance rate is more than 120 ml per minute gets excreted out through this tubular secretion. 
How? Because 120 ml of it will get filtered through glomerular capillaries, but the remaining amount gets directly or actively transported from the peritubular capillaries into the renal tubules. So the drugs then gets excreted out through this secretion method. Now this tubular secretion method is not very well developed in neonates and infants. So we give drugs at a lower dosage to children. Now one point which applies here is the protein binding capacity which was the hindrance for glomerular filtration rate is not with the case of tubular secretion. Why? Because as soon as the free drug gets excreted through this secretion method, the drug which was binded to protein gets dissociates and get converted into free drug. Now this free drug is then available for secretion. So this was the tubular secretion. After studying all these three process, we get one equation here. What? The net renal excretion. Now what will be the net renal excretion? Glomerular filtration plus tubular secretion minus tubular reabsorption. I have taken one example here. If 120 ml is our glomerular filtrate, 40 ml we are getting from tubular secretion. So it becomes 160 ml. But out of this 160 ml, if 30 ml is again reabsorbed, that is tubular reabsorption, what will get in hand is 130 ml. So 130 ml will be our net renal excretion. Now the next we'll be studying here is the clearance rate of the drug. What is the concept of clearance rate of the drug? It is the quantity of drug which is removed out or excreted out from the given volume of plasma. So it will be the clearance rate of the drug. So the formula which comes here is rate of elimination upon the plasma concentration. See, if the concentration of drug in plasma is 10 microgram per ml, while at the rate of 500 microgram per minute, it is eliminated out of that organ of elimination. So what we get here, the rate of elimination is 500 microgram, while its concentration in plasma is 10 microgram so the clearance rate is 50 microgram per minute so this is how the clearance rate of a drug is calculated now the next concept comes is the order of kinetics the drugs follow certain order while getting eliminated out of the body it is first order kinetics or zero order kinetics now what is first order kinetics now when the drug is given in proper dosage the drug gets eliminated out at a specific interval at a specific concentration. So the elimination is directly proportional to the concentration of the drug. Now if we have given 1000 mg of drug, 16% of that will get eliminated. Now then remains the 840 mg. Then 16% of the 840 mg will get eliminated. So this process goes on. The fraction of elimination always remains constant. It is not the amount of drug which gets eliminated. It's the fraction of that drug which gets eliminated and that is the constant value. So this was the first order kinetics. The next is the zero order kinetics. Now when zero order kinetics is followed, when the drug is given in large doses, in cases of poisoning and all, what happens when the drug given is in larger concentration, the enzymes required for its metabolism get saturated. Wo enzymes come ho jayegi. Agar enzymes hi to drug metabolism kaise hoga? Agar drug metabolism nahi to uska excretion kaise hoga? So isme kya hota hai? The drug gets eliminated on its own without following any order of kinetics. That is the zero order kinetics. The concentration here does not depend upon the uh, or the elimination here does not depend upon the concentration of the drug. A fixed amount gets eliminated out. If 1000 mg is given, 200 mg will get eliminated out. Then remains 800 mg. Then 200 mg will eliminate out. So here the fraction is not maintained constant. The amount is constant. So this was the zero order kinetics. And guys, here we end with excretion. All was this all was about excretion. Now we are ending with pharmacokinetics also. So see you guys with a very new and interesting topic. Keep learning, keep growing. <laughs>